we are in the middle of trying to understand how our wave functions in the energy basis depend on time. And we got to this step in the previous video where we now have these C sub i are individual coefficients that depend on time for our different energy eigenstates. We have this relationship now that it's going to be a differential equation. And we can actually rearrange this ever so slightly. Now you can imagine just dividing out i h bar. So we are left with ddt of c sub i. And this is just to say it's a specific one, because in the summation we're summing over n. So if you want to call this c sub k, that's completely equivalent. And then now over here we'd be left with e to the i over ih. It's a little confusing to, to use i since this index is just its name. And now ci t. Now one thing to note is you could imagine multiplying this e to the i over ih bar. Say we want to multiply that by i over i. i over i is clearly 1, so it's valid to do this. And we're then left with i e to the i h bar. What is i times i? Well, negative 1. So another way to to write this, and there's going to be a reason we do it, is actually this way. So we're going to write this as negative um, e to the i, i over h bar. A few different ways to write it, super valid. Okay, now, what we're going to do here is just call, for the sake of this looks complicated, we have this index notation that some of you might not be very familiar with, we have a complex number, Let's, let's try to simplify this a little bit. So let's call this f of t. This is a function of time. It's not a vector function, might be a complex function, um, but somehow this has a functional dependence. So this is also f of t, right? Same thing. Over here, we're taking its time derivative. Let's call this thing, let's leave the minus sign, let's just call this k. And notice that in this case, k can be com is complex. So k is a complex number, and uh, that's going to be OK. So now when I rewrite this, I have d dt of f of t, some function, is equal to negative k f of t. So this is a fairly simple differential equation. If you haven't had differential equations, guessing and checking is a completely valid approach to use here. You just have to make sure that you've guessed something general enough. Um, if you have had differential equations, then in fact you know that guess and check is a completely valid approach. So there needs to be some functional form that in fact returns itself with just a scalar coefficient, in fact a negative scalar coefficient. So the point being, let's just guess that f of t, oops, sorry, f of t is equal to, say, uh, let's have a coefficient out front, let's have that coefficient be capital A, and then say t squared. Well, when I then have df dt, that equals 2a t. So we've lost a factor of t. So the point being that we need to actually get back that functional form. If we had any polynomial, it would not work because you're always changing what that power is. So this is bad, it's not that. Now let's just guess another function. Let's guess that f of t is equal to a, always good to have that coefficient out front, e to the, mm, let's try bt. Okay, so now I take its time derivative. That coefficient a stays out front and now the time derivative of an exponential where it has the function of e times a scalar times your, your value, just that coefficient up front comes down. So this would then be a, b, e to the bt. Nothing changes about what's up in that exponential. So we actually see when you look at this that a and e to the bt, those were the parts of our original function. So this in fact leaves us as b f of t. So this is actually the function we want, right? We have to be a little bit cautious about exactly how we write it, um, and we need to have a specific value of b. So what this means is that what solves this 
is that f of t is equal to some coefficient out front a, we don't know what that is equal to, and then we have an exponent, and what's up in our exponent is negative k t. And we can check that, that I then have, sorry, let me go up here, df dt, I have a, negative k comes down, negative k, e to the negative kt, and so then df dt, again I identify that a, e to the negative kt was f, so this is negative k f of t, right? So that is now proof that this works. So we have now identified something about the functional form that these c values have. So in the next video, we'll then unpack this a little bit more to understand what this means and how we think about these coefficients uh, really packaging up our time dependence.